Hello everyone, welcome to the Femex Twitter space. Today we have a very special episode featuring a great lineup of crypto veterans who are going to share their thoughts on the market, review crypto portfolios, discuss trending coins and much more. You definitely don't want to miss this one. So grab a seat, relax and enjoy today's discussion. Let's get started. Before we dive in, let's kick things off with brief inf introductions from all of our speakers. If time permits, towards the end, as I mentioned before, we may also invite more guests and audience members to join us on our stage as well. In today's Twitter, uh, Twitter Space session, we are joined by Ben, Tom, AJ, and our CEO, Federico. Guys, we are thrilled to have you on the space. Let's start the introduction with Ben. Could you please provide a brief introduction and share with the audience what initially, initially sorry, drew you into the world of crypto? Yeah, sure. So uh, I accidentally fell into crypto uh, many, many years ago. I'm in my 12th year of crypto now. Uh, first buying back in uh, December of 2012. Basically, I had to have a software for a business I ran. And that software, the guy required Bitcoin. So trying to learn how to use it was obviously uh, quite the task early on, uh, but definitely was worth it. And you know now a lot of people know I've built my entire life around cryptocurrency and uh, its adoption. And that's what we do with Bitcoin and uh, as well as what we do with the channel uh, and look forward to uh, you know talking about what's going on with the markets today. Thank you, Ben. Uh, let's continue with AJ. Hey, what's up? How's everybody doing today? Uh, excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, to follow up, Ben, I got involved for, with crypto probably 16. 16, I bought my first Bitcoin to uh, play online poker. And then um, the poker playing went so well that I decided to just buy the Bitcoin instead of go to the poker site. And from there, um, I, you know, I slowly got more and more and more involved as the years went on, as I kind of realized, like, the silver lining and the opportunity it, opportunity it presented and then in 2020 2021 i started uh writing for ben helping him out with videos and stuff like that and then now i have my own channel and ben and i are still friends but i don't write for him anymore but um but i just talk about crypto every day the news portfolio builds leverage trading all the things very excited um it's right now is actually a really interesting time to be in crypto and i hope that we get to that in the conversation as well yeah, I fully agree with you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, let's continue with Tom. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tom Crown. I've uh, been on YouTube coming up on five years in May here doing full-time crypto stuff. And uh, what, what originally drew me to the space was I went to school for political science. I got my degree and it was kind of worthless. Um, it was kind of worthless. I'd been kind of disillusioned and I found a lot of things in my life were, were that way as a millennial. And uh, crypto came in and it really offered to me the first example or the first, really the first real thing. You know, this, it's, it's real, it's uh, verifiable, it's there. It's not kind of this story that I've been led to believe my whole life about how things work. And my first thought was, this is how voting should be done. And as soon as I had that realization, it was pretty obvious that this has implications in probably every sector in everyone's life. And since then, I've, I've just been hooked. I'm here. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, all right, so let's continue with Federico, our CEO. Please introduce yourself. Hey guys, uh, this is Federico. I am the CEO at Femex. I've been part of the founding team since 2019. Recently, um, a lot of developments in our exchange. We launched our token. So I hope to hear a lot of people holding it in their portfolio today. I'm very happy uh, that uh, Ben, AJ, and Tom were able to join us today for these reviews. I think it's going to be fun. Um, ben and Tom, we know each other for a lot of years at this point, and AJ is a new acquaintance. So I'm very happy to have you all guys on. I hope that the discussion will be fun. So yeah, thank you all for coming, and thanks to all the uh, listeners. Please uh, send your portfolios. We'll be happy to, to take a look and maybe uh, get some alpha from, from our listeners as well. Perfect. Thank you, Federico. So let's start with our main discussion. Um, we are going to transition into evaluating crypto portfolios. So here's a quick overview of the guidelines. Each participant will take the stage to showcase the crypto portfolio, 
or type in the comments giving us the percentage allocated to each coin. We don't want to hear the real numbers, you can share them as well, but the percentage allocation is important. Following each presentation, our guests, AJ, Ben and Tom, will have an opportunity to assess and rate the portfolios. Another two guests, or Federico will tune in as well, and we can also see uh, Phantom is here as well. He is going to join the discussion at a later stage. Okay, so... Also, um, really the, fast with that, I, I have to point this out that when, if anyone, you know, types the, their allocations or whatever, I, I think it's very important that you also put your goal. Because, you know, the the goal of your portfolio is is really the meat and potatoes of the, of the bit, right? Because, you know, if someone has... Um, uh, twenty five percent in four coins, and all four of those coins are in the top ten of crypto. But their goal, you know, is a twenty x. Uh, you know, it's not twenty sixteen anymore. Like the likelihood of that happening is not very strong. So I always like kind of want people to like have make crypto and their allocations be like a goal oriented thing. And when it's it's just because then. I think a lot of people that just rode to the top and then rode back to the bottom, that happened because they didn't have a goal set. So I think, you know, trying to um, put down on paper what your goal is, at what point are you ready to pull the shoot, I feel like that's equally important as the allocation and the distribution. So just wanted to say that. Yeah, that's a great addition, AJ. I also think it comes down to the risk tolerance. Uh, also mentioning a portfolio or allocation we should also mention how, many, how much risk is involved and what target projection we have in which time step. Uh, so investing is a complex topic. We uh, don't want to ignore the other factors. So feel free to add these in the portfolio review. And also for the audience, for those who are sharing the portfolios, also share your perspective. Okay, let us check for uh, some comments. The Phoenix account is going to take care of this. And in the meanwhile, I have uh, questions for Tom, Ben, and AJ, feel free to answer them. And yeah, let's dive into it. Uh, uh, let me just quickly check. We already have uh, someone here. Hold on a minute. OK, let's continue with a question. I think it fits very well to uh, what AJ just mentioned. When it comes to evaluating new projects, everyone has their own set of criteria. Could you share with the audience the key factors you consider when assessing the potential of a new cryptocurrency project? What makes a project stand out to you? Let's start with Ben. I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Yeah, um, well, you know, I've been going through a process of trying to pick out what all my top coins for this bull run are in different niches. Uh, niches in the right word. Different levels of coins, low caps, micro caps, mid caps. I've been going through a lot of these different projects. And, you know, every time you start going through, especially digging through low caps, you're going to find so many new projects. And the problem with new projects is that they're hard to verify things with. So if a project just gets listed on CoinGecko, for instance, it doesn't necessarily mean that a rating is going to be correct because the market cap may be unknown. You see that a coin market cap does a lot better job of putting up warnings and things like that. But when you're dealing with a new coin, the, the number one thing you want to look for is reliability. You want to make sure that this is not a scam. You want to make sure that the people on the team, if you guys have seen BitCon uh, from Centra, I remember when Centra happened, you find they just made up a bunch of team members. One, they made The CEO was just made up. There were tons of projects back in 2017 that made up team members, and it's really easy to do now still. Uh, there's not a lot of verification, and there's not a huge difference between a project that looks great and then a project that is great. <laughs> they're, they're sometimes looking at them and evaluating them, evaluating them can be very difficult to determine uh, which one's legit, which one's not. Something, something I like to do is kind of lean on a site like Token Metrics. Token Metrics is a site that I've used for a long time. Ian Bellina uh, is behind it. Uh, I'm not going to give you guys a ref link or anything for it. I just mean I literally use it to verify new projects because a lot of times Token Metrics has different kind of factors that allows projects to be listed on there 
uh, with much more stringent requirements than something getting listed on like CoinGecko. Because for it to get on token metrics, I mean, somebody from the token metrics team has to have at least done some research on it. So what I like to do when I'm looking for newer projects is find ones that I can see that other people that I put, that I believe have credibility, see what they have said about them. Because like I said, that's the number one thing. You, all these projects are just potential. Everything we look at in crypto is potential. Now we're getting to a place where something like Ethereum definitely has a use case and is not necessarily just on potential. But I mean, we still look at Ethereum and say we're very early. There's still a lot of potential there too. So when you're looking at these new projects, you're really trying to grade them on potential and all of them are going to sound great. That's the way they're all designed. <laughs> they're all designed to pump. They're designed to look great, uh, designed to get interest. A website is basically just a marketing tool. So you're looking at their marketing when you're looking at it. So to me, verifying and making sure the project is good and legit, that's by far the most important thing. Yeah, that was very insightful. Fully agree on that, Ben. Uh, AJ, how about you? Any uh, complimentary comments to that? Uh, AJ, we, we cannot hear you in case you're already speaking. I see you're, you're unmuted. Uh, otherwise, uh, Tom, feel free to uh, to tune in oh, and share your opinion. Oh, sorry, I um I lost my works already. Sorry, I got disconnected. Um, oh. Spaces lately, man, they've been rough on me. Ask Tom about this one. It's been, yo, it, they've 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 been struggling on. It. Elon's mad at us for some reason. I think no, not really. But um, yeah, to follow up with what Ben said, I mean, there are. I mean, I think, like, how many projects did you say were in crypto on your show yesterday, Ben? Like, 12, 13,000 projects to something? Well, that, that's, that's kind of a... So, basically, you know, you have the CoinGecko that gives those listings. And you have CoinMarketCap that gives... Now, CoinMarketCap lists basically every single coin in existence. They say there's millions of coins. Uh, but the long and the short of it is that, um, you know, with... Uh, the number of coins, most of those coins are dead. I mean, out of 12,000 or 14,000 coins, whatever it is on CoinGecko, I mean, probably 70% of those are dead. And when you look at the listings, it's very important to know there's a distinction, there's a big difference between the coins that are actually listed. If you were to just say scroll through all the way, if you went to like page one of 12 and you went all the way to the 12th page, what you'll find is there's not actually 14,000 cryptocurrencies listed on CoinGecko. They have index pages that have the information of them, but they're not actually listed in their rankings. So I think that number is closer to about two to 3,000. For sure. I, I mean, my, my point that here is that um, like you can't expect anybody, even you know, professionals in the space, to you know, systematically go through every coin that there is. I mean, even inside the top four, 500, there are, you know, so many coins that I personally like don't really know that much about. And so with that being said, I mean, everyone's always looking for the next gem, right? But I always kind of feel like the word on the street has always been pretty reliable. Like um, I, for like when I'm trying to find like, okay, like here's this new altcoin project that's just inside the top 500. Like, is this thing reliable? Is it not reliable? I think the way I've always done that has just been looking at, you know, how many, um, how many like influencers are like actually talking about them, not because they're paid to talk about them. Uh, you know, how many, how many other projects are they partnered up with? I always feel like if the quickest way to figure out something is a scam is to figure out how many other, you know, real projects are they integrated with. I just did a space with the, uh, yesterday with PAL, for instance, and PAL, you know, it was just inside the top 400. But basically, they have been partnering with a new project or two new projects every day for the past weeks and weeks. This is because, you know, like if you look at Chainlink, for instance, how many, uh, they kind of have a monopoly on the Oracle space, right? So, and everyone wants in on the Oracle. So they're partnering for real world data. So that's why back in the day, you would see so many partnerships for Chainlink. I'm seeing a similar thing happen with Pal because everyone wants the integrated AI. So it's like, that's just an example on like, you're always looking for like real world on real word on the street, not like paid things. And you're definitely looking for how many other projects want to partner up with that project for whatever it is they're offering. Like I generally kind of move away from things that don't have like utility. Um, I mean, there's even meme coin projects that have really good utility if it's like a mixing bot on telegram or whatever. So I don't know. That's kind of how I've always looked at it. Um, and then obviously if like there's the team is docs and simple things like that, but word on the street is always is king in my book. 
Thanks for sharing that. Very important. Uh, Tom, I would love to hear your opinion. Yeah, there's some good stuff shared here. This is probably more in AJ and Ben's wheelhouse. Um, I myself, I'm a little bit lower risk. Um, I don't really dive or research into lower cap things. Uh, when things kind of pop on my radar, and typically that'll be through my community or during the live streams, you know, I'll, I'll pay attention to kind of what names come up. And it can be difficult because certainly there are bots and things are spamming, you know, whatever scams are trying to get out there. So it's, it is a lot about reading through like kind of between the lines in my experience and uh, just feeling out, I guess, community, what they, what they think about it, uh, who's looking to invest in it. It's really uh, not my, not my expertise for sure. I typically just kind of throw small amounts of money at low cap things when they come on my radar and uh, just let them go, see what happens. I think that's a perfect mix uh, for the upcoming crypto portfolio review that, you, that we are going to start. Uh, at the one hand, having the low risk exposure and on the, on the other hand, having the high risk exposure. So uh, we have some portfolio allocations that have been shared. I want to start with the one from Andrew Breslin. He shared his uh, Gold 20X portfolio. You can see it in the Twitter space if you scroll a bit down. There are some tweets attached and the title of the tweet is Gold 20x. I'm going to read his allocation, the first five positions, and guys, you are free to discuss either the allocation or the choice of, of the cryptocurrencies. All right, so uh, let's start off. The currently biggest position when it comes to the dollar value is Cardano. Next up, we have Chainlink, then we have XRP, then we have the APEX token, and the fifth position is Gala. So, uh, as mentioned, feel free to pick any of these coins or just a general uh, general alloc allocation. Oh, uh, no, that doesn't make sense. Let me let me continue with uh, with the rest of the portfolio, so you can you have the whole picture. I'm oh, sorry. So the first five have been mentioned. The next five, the remaining five positions, is uh, on the one hand Algorand. We also have Polygon. Another one is Vulcan Forge. The next position is Illuvium, and the final position is Optimism. All right, that's the portfolio of Andrew Breslin. So feel free to uh, discuss. Yeah, I'll go first. I actually think it's a pretty good, pretty good portfolio. It's not perfect. Wow. Uh, by any stretch of imagination, uh, but I think it's actually pretty good. I mean, you have uh, Cardano, and you have Chainlink, and you have XRP at the top. I mean, I think those are all great ones to have at the top. I think they're all going to outperform Ethereum. Uh, so I think that's really good. And then I started looking down here. Uh, so I like your top three positions. I think, I think they're good. As Apex token, that's the one I don't know. I don't even know what that is. I assume that's not Ape. Uh, I don't know what Apex is. Uh, so that could or maybe be a meme coin or something very risky. I'm not sure. I have no idea. Um, but then you start getting into you've got Gala and you've got Vulcan Forge. You've got Alluvium. So you have some projects that are all in the blockchain gaming space. So you, you kind of when you're trying to like throw out portfolios, there's really two different strategies you, you can use when it comes to uh, attacking niches. You can either try to get the top three or four coins that you want in one particular niche in your portfolio, or you can just pick one per niche and then you have more niches representing your portfolio. So uh, obviously you went with the blockchain gaming narrative here. So you got three of those. I think, I think they're all three you know, decent coins. I'm not the biggest fan of Gallo, but I like Vulcan Forge and Alluvium. And then you've got some layer twos. You have Polygon Optimism. I, I would say, ah, look, I, I think layer twos are not going to end up being the narrative we thought they were for this bull run. And the reason is because Solana is absolutely crushing Ethereum right now. We'll continue to do so. Uh, Cardano probably next up. Uh, you know, you've got Sui and Aptos doing really phenomenal things. Uh, you've got a lot of these layer ones that are already fast that don't need layer twos. And so I would say my, my one recommendation would be uh, I, I would probably swap out that optimism with something else. Um, that, that's just me personally. I'm okay with you having Polygon. It's going to go up for sure. And then you have Algorand. I like Algorand. It's a good project. Uh, one of my top coins of the year, mainly because of how much it was down uh, still this year from its all-time high. So, you know, overall, uh, I give this like a 78. Uh, I think uh, you've got a little risky play, a little too much of your portfolio. Um, and I think you could to diversify just a little bit between those uh, layer twos. But overall, I think it's just pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. <clears throat> it's not bad. Uh, my, I uh, listen, I'm fine with the, um, with the picks. 
Uh, the distribution isn't the worst. Uh, you know, I agree with Ben about optimism. I'm also a bit skeptical on Gala, mainly because optimism and Gala both have, you know, some of the worst tokenomics in crypto. Um, but that doesn't mean they won't pump. That doesn't mean that they, they won't have success. I'm just saying that when the market cap is literally chasing the supply the whole way, uh, it's going to struggle when it's time for the price to go up. That's why I kind of like finding coins that have really nice tokenomic situations, uh, like, you know, um, like the graph and um, quant, for instance. But, but really, I think the most concerning part of this portfolio is the goal. Uh, the goal is a 20x. Um, so I always tell this story. I'll keep the, I'll tell this, this, the brief version of my, my grandfather and my uncle Boo clashing cores like hands because they had an 8% year in the stock market. 8% in one year. And now it's like a common thing for people to just think that they can like load up in top 10, top 50 coins and think that they're going to 20x, a 20x, you realize how much money would have to be in Cardano's market cap to 20x. And basically like you're, you're either saying that um, you know, I'm having the larger market cap coins as an anchor and the smaller coins in my portfolio are going to carry me to my goal because, you know, the, the, certainly the larger cap coins 20xing this bull market, that, that is asking for a lot, that is asking for a lot like a lot. And uh, so with this specific bag, if your goal was a 7 to 8x, maybe even a 10x, I would, you know, I wouldn't hum and haw so much. But I, I the, the fact that the goal on this one is a 20x, um, I don't want you to just, you know, get hit the bull market and think like, oh, it's just going to keep going and then ride this bag back to the bottom because your goal was far too ambitious. So, you know, not being rude or anything, but um, definitely, definitely um, you have to align your coin selection with your goal. And I don't feel that the coin selection is aligned with the goal. And I also don't feel that um, I, I, I think the goal is far too ambitious, to be honest. Tom, what do you think? Well, it's missing Bitcoin. I, I can't I can't put my seal of approval on any portfolio with zero Bitcoin. Um, it doesn't. You don't have to be like me and have a lot of Bitcoin. It doesn't have to be fifty percent. But at zero, man, I I, I just I it's not my. Well, Tom, he does he does want gains. He he does he does want gains, Tom. Like we we can't be mad at him because he wants gains. You know, I, I'm not mad. <laughs> not mad at him. <laughs> um, I mean, I I've been I've had. Bitcoin for years and years and years. I still stack it. I have gains. Uh, so, I mean, it, it, apparently both are possible. Uh, so, Tom, would you say that having Bitcoin in the portfolio would lower the risk, risk exposure? Oh, sorry, the risk exposure? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, people really focus on, you know, T AJ, I do like what AJ said about what's your goal. I usually say kind of what's your plan, uh, but they're similar concepts, right? And, um, when we think about these, people tend to just latch on to the positive, right? That's you know, pretty human. Um, we want the upside. We want the X. Uh, but an equally important question is, what is the risk in your portfolio? And what happens is people tend not to balance that, especially newer investors. And typically that looks like not having any Bitcoin in your portfolio. I, I really just uh, kind of want to rehash or remind the audience that you know upsides are amazing in crypto, but so are downsides. And when you have Bitcoin in your portfolio, you smooth that out a little bit. What percent? Yeah, you know, it's up to you. Uh, but it really, yeah, it really does protect you from the downside. I mean, but it's it's, it's still a almost eighty percent downswing. Uh, we went on. There's a big difference between eighty percent and ninety, uh, approximately ninety percent, which a lot of the coins had. And yeah, ninety seven, ninety eight percent is some of them, which is definitely pretty insane. But um, you know, I, I think the important thing is understanding when you're at an appreciating time in crypto and when you're at a depreciating time in crypto, understanding the, the markets. And right now, uh, locally, of course, we've been on a downswing, but uh, in the macro, we've definitely been on the way up in the beginning of a bull run. And so during times like this, it's more advantageous to own things other than Bitcoin. But once we all top, 
everybody understands Tom's 100% right. Holding Bitcoin on the way down definitely protects protects you. But why wouldn't you just move it over to stable coins if you knew we were going down too? So um, definitely different schools of thought there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I understand. Listen, I kind of feel like if you are a person that you know has six figures or you're a millionaire or whatever, Holding Bitcoin all day long, I would 100% recommend. But if you're you're also, then if you're a person that, uh, you know, is just trying to get as much upside as you can, uh, and you have someone like this, you know, this person holding this bag here that where their goal is a 20x, um, you know, I, I, like I said, you always want to align your coin selection with your goal. And definitely, you know, Bitcoin's probably not going to 5x, probably not. Uh, You know, so I, I always... I, and so I always say, if you want the most upside, if you have like, if you're someone with less than $50,000 and you're just trying to get as much upside as you possibly can. Uh, I mean, holding Bitcoin probably is not the ticket. Pro- probably not the ticket. Oh, let me not, I agree with what you guys are saying. I, I just feel like a disconnect of, it's almost like you're proposing it as if you have any Bitcoin, you can't get these upsides. And I think obviously, I mean, you guys know, you're not trying to say that, uh, that that's not reality. Like if you had 1% Bitcoin, and you add the rest of your portfolio, kind of these higher risk plays, like you could still be in that same position. Yeah, but I think I think another really important point to note here uh, is that when we're looking at these portfolios, we're looking at spot portfolios, obviously. Um, there are ways with leverage trading, like with Femex, to make massive amounts of money on Bitcoin trading. And I think, Tom, you do use leverage. So where Tom's not delving more into the risk on assets and crypto, um, he is pursuing the risk on instruments of trading because what we're all in, we all like big upside. That's why we're here. We all love big upside. Of course, some of us are also here because we believe in the philosophy and ideals of cryptocurrency and decentralization. Uh, but right now we're talking from an investment standpoint. We want upside and, and altcoins provide a lot of upside from a spot perspective. And then, of course, you know, Bitcoin trading with leverage is a different trading tool that offers you kind of the same kind of upside. So um, certainly... Uh, Tom is correct that owning percentage of your portfolio in Bitcoin is a lot of people, you know, it's good. I think everybody should aim to at some point. Uh, but I believe that most people that are in crypto right now are not uh, holding probably $10,000 and up even in crypto. Uh, and so they're looking for those massive gains. And the pursuit of massive gains in, in, in the world of risk on assets, it can be, you know, quite scary sometimes because sometimes the risk doesn't work out. <laughs> and so you have to be willing to, to do that. And I think that, you know, in AJ, one, one point I just want to make real quick on AJ talking about 20X is uh, I 400 x my entire crypto portfolio in 2021, uh, 2020 and 2021, 400 x to my entire portfolio, um, went from $100,000 to $40 million. So it is possible. Uh, those numbers are all there. Keep in mind, I was working in crypto, and that's a lot of why I was able to do this, because I was getting paid in crypto for a lot of things I was doing, uh, or I was actively, when crypto was at its peak, had a lot of attention on my channel and things like that. So certainly that may not be normal for just if I wasn't in crypto like this, uh, but I'd be way richer if I just held all my Bitcoin in the very beginning when I got in. But uh, the, the point is, you have to understand that the entire market is moving towards a more volatile place. That's why people think 20 X's are realistic. It's not because of crypto. Uh, is because even the stock market has insane returns uh, now, these days, where you look at the volatility on the downside, and you had many top stocks that were down 80%. We don't see that. The volatility from crypto is actually spreading into the real world. It's not vice versa. Crypto is not getting more conservative. I believe traditional markets are getting less conservative and more aggressive. So um, I think everybody just needs to understand your goals with your portfolios, that if you are trying to get a 20x, to get more exes, you have to be more risky. And so um, I have no problem if that's someone's expectation, if that's what they want. But you just need to understand there's a lot of downside risk that comes with that too, and you might lose it all. And most people in crypto, you make a ton of money and then you let it go all the way back down to zero as well. I mean, we've seen that over and over and over again. So I uh, want to point out, make a few comments there. I think that's a very good opportunity to move on to the next portfolio allocation. I think it, yeah, is a bit more traditional. You can discuss this as well. It's uh, the portfolio from Frank D'Angela. So the first position is BTC with 65% allocation. Continue with ETH, Ethereum with 10%, TRX with another 10%, also TON, TON with 5%, Femex token with 5%, Lido with 3%, and Monero with 2%.
So we, I think it's a big difference to the portfolio we discussed before. So um, we also see. A I love it. Of, <laughs> yeah, Tom, 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 why don't you go Tom, first, Tom? Tom? Yeah, why don't you go first on this one, bro? Actually, it's funny. Uh, yeah, there are some here that I don't have, but you know, this is this is kind of like where my portfolio mindset is at. It's a core of Bitcoin. For me, that's like 75, 80%, similar to uh, their 65. Then Ethereum coming on in next. And you got things like uh, Monero, even TRX. Like These are some older picks, of course. They've been a little more quiet. Um, but uh, man, TRX actually has really had my attention. It, it just won't go under 10 cents. But I like this portfolio, personally. Uh, I'm sure Ben and AJ are not going to like it, but that's okay. We're allowed to disagree. I, I love that Tom loves that portfolio. That's all my comments. Me too. I, exactly. Exactly. Uh, wait, was there a, is there a goal Perfect. next to this portfolio that they say what what their plan goal is here? Like four x five x? Would they say anything like that? Un- unfortunately, uh, for this comment, no. It's just a, just the allocation. Yeah. So we, so, you we know, can ask. Uh, Frank is in the audience. I think he might uh, add it to to his comment. Sure. Definitely. Uh, I I don't really know if I can speak on it properly unless I know. What his expectations are, what you know, what his plan slash goal is. I do agree, plan and goal, uh, very similar. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think you know what you think. How I th- what you think I'd think about this portfolio is is what I think about it. But um, you know, but it also comes down to what his what he's trying to do. You know, if it, if his goal is just to, to double triple his bag, I mean, you can double triple your your bag with just about anything. It feels like you know, and, and I feel like that's probably a really safe way to do it. But if his goal is uh, a 10x, I'm going to just stretch the back of my head and politely just look at Tom. That's all. I, I think I can almost speak for him. I would imagine that his goal maybe isn't as maybe, I don't want to say short-sighted because I'm not trying to downplay what you're saying, but t- typically people who have portfolios similar to mine don't really have an X in mind. It's a, it's a long-term play. This is like a wealth grow over time. For, hopefully, Frank can jump in or comment or edit it, but uh, that's what I would assume is that he doesn't have a specific number in mind. Yeah, that, that's something I would also assume. Uh, it looks like a very traditional portfolio from someone who maybe might not be that involved in crypto, because all of us, um, we are certainly, it's, it's our daily job, so uh, the portfolio allocation might look uh, quite different. So we have another uh, portfolio that Hubert uh, Grigorski has uh, sent to us and he also has a goal mentioned i will read his full comment because i think it's uh, very good actually and i'm looking forward to the discussion so uh, still rather i'm reading his comment right now still rather a short midterm holding trading i'm looking to invest a uh, long term over the next months most bil- most bullish on new narrative tr and sei gaming like pyr ai like paal and NFTs. Long-term goal is around 4 to 8x. I'm going to read out the portfolio allocation now. 10% in PT, Femex token, 5% in PAAL, 10% in gaming, consists of Gala, PYR, and ELU, 10% in ARP and OP, 5% in Zushi and Uniswap, 5% in Solana, 10% in Layer 1 solutions like Say and SUI, 3% in Audi, 2% in meme tokens like Pipa and Troll, and another 30% in USDT, which is also a very interesting position. You can also reread his comment and his allocation uh, in the Twitter space, so feel free to start the discussion. Um, I mean, sure, I, I, I don't hate it. I, I like that he's holding a lot of stables. This is obviously someone who's aware of the fact that in the short term here, um, it looks not looking the best from a couple different metrics. Would not be surprised to see a little bit more of a retest play out over the next month or so. Uh, so he's probably you know super aware of that and trying to get in lower. I mean, forty percent of his bag is in USDT, so he's definitely like he has a lot of dry powder on the side to deploy later, and and that and that's so definitely a very smart thing to do. I always tell people if you're stuck, if you don't know what to do, just and you and you do a weekly DCA. Just with just DCA in the stable coins, and it will become a lot more clear what you should do down the road as things play out. So DCA in the stable coins, uh, and having stable coins in your bag on the side, I mean, smart, smart move. Forty percent. I mean, I mean, he's ready. He's ready to deploy. I also don't mind his other picks. You know, 
Um, he has some DeFi picks, has some Solana, has Ordi, which is good. You know, the Ordinal market doing very well. He has 5% in POW. I think POW, as I mentioned earlier in the space, is going to be a really good project. It's currently outside of the top 400 with new partnerships every day. They're just starting to really roll out. Uh, I mean, that one's going to have a lot of upside, in my opinion. Uh, you know, we have Arbitrum, Optimism, some gaming coins, SEI, SUI for the layer ones. Got some got some memes in there, the small 2% Pepe troll and all that. So, I mean, I, I, I think this is a pretty well-rounded portfolio. And I also, uh, with a long-term goal around 4 to 8x, I feel like... That is very, very realistic and very achievable. I feel like a lot of people uh, that have a, you know, uh, would have that same bag would 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 be aiming for a fifteen to twenty x because you know they're all split in so many like kind of smaller coins um, a little further down the list. And uh, so Hoover's definitely taking a super pragmatic approach to this bag and. And uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm going to give this one like an 83. I, I like it. Okay. All right. Let me see what I think about it here. Um, okay. It doesn't so, have XRP though. So. Well, it definitely gets taken off when I have an XRP. Anything that doesn't have XRP, it does have Solana. I'll take that. Uh, but anything doesn't, that doesn't have Solana, XRP, and AVAX, I, I don't really know what you're doing. Um, those three coins are probably going to be three of, if not the three biggest movers in this market. Uh, Avalanche is shaping up to probably be the next kind of Solana. Um, you have uh, you saw the money, the investment, the VC money flowing that way at the end of the last market, and it's continued again. Uh, so I, I think those are definitely projects that you want. And so of course, you know, if they're not in there, um, you know, I, I don't really like that. Uh, I do like PT Token. I think PT Token is going to do very well. I think Femex is doing a great job with its marketing. Um, I think you look at uh, the BitGet Token, for instance. It's done really, really well. I think Femex Token even has more utility and is going to be doing more. Um, I love PAL. It's one of my top low caps uh, of the year. Uh, Ordi, uh, I like that project as well. Sci and Sweet, great projects. Absolutely phenomenal. I love the 10% there. Um, Pepe and Troll. I don't know much about Troll. I mean, Pepe, I'm fine with you having the, something there. Uh, 10% Arbitrum and Optimism, I would get out of those. I, I just don't. I, I'm telling you, I, I personally, I think Arbitrum and Optimism are going to underperform uh, compared to what we all thought. We've already talked about Layer 2 is why we feel that way. Um, Sushi and Uni, that's an interesting one. Um, I would assume since you have a lot of money in USDT, you're using some of that for staking. Um, that would kind of make sense. Uh, 5% Solana, love that. Uh, and then, you know, pretty much the same portfolio gaming as the other guy. Uh, so overall, look, I think it's a it's a decent portfolio. It's missing XRP. It's missing Cardano. Uh, it's missing Avalanche. Uh, you do have 5% Solana. That's pretty good. But you have a lot of money to deploy in capital. So you add those coins with that capital, then I think it could, you know, easily go up, uh, you know, to, to a really solid portfolio between a 90 and a 100. Looks like Hubert knows what he's doing is what I'll say. I can, I, I'll say something different than last time. Uh <laughs> Well, the uh, 40% in USDT is is definitely interesting, and I don't know Hubert, so I'm just kind of speculating that maybe a little newer to the crypto market, and maybe I'm wrong, but um, that could be a strong position, especially for someone who is newer or still building their position up. I think that the, a lot of people tend to just jump in, throw everything in day one, and that doesn't really work out well. Uh, so I think he... Obviously missing Bitcoin, but uh, the 40% USDT is going to give him a little bit of stability in his portfolio. I like that he's kind of allocated small amounts to things. This is something I'm a huge preacher of, you know, say Bitcoin. But then the good part is after you have some position in Bitcoin, you can just go pick up whatever you want. Like you can have these small positions. Like don't be afraid. I uh, I buy like $100 or something of just whatever whatever people bring to me that I'm like, oh, that chart's all right. Like I'll just throw 100 bucks at it. And now I have a tiny position in this coin and typically they're micro caps. And if they grow, that $100 can turn into a lot of money. I think people make the mistake of kind of being all in, A, B, kind of has to be this way or that way when in reality, you can you really mix it up. You can be very diverse if you want. Oh, that's a very good point. We we also saw that Huber uh, Huber just joined our our chat. We just reviewed uh, just reviewing his portfolio. Maybe he wants to add something. I mean, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. We can. Uh, hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, man. 
Yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm yeah, very, very bullish on uh, AVAX. So just to address this point, I'm going to for sure invest in AVAX. And yeah, what I'm looking for is, you know, like uh, great opportunities over a uh, few next months. So, you know, I sold most of my portfolio over the last weeks. So I'm just, you know, very bullish on next uh, months and years. So just, you know, uh, prepare to deploy this USDT. Yeah, amazing. Thanks for sharing. I think it's uh, it shows a very clear difference as we discussed before, uh, like having some cash or virtual cash on the hand can be very beneficial when it comes to a downtrend or the current phase we are in. All right, so let's jump to our next portfolio. This portfolio is from Phantom. He's also a speaker in this Twitter space. I'm going to read out his portfolio allocation. It is shared as a, as a picture. So this is a small test about my crypto knowledge. So his biggest allocation is Solana, followed by Avalanche, followed by uh, Crow, Polygon, VeChain, Matic, Chainlink, and also Smooth Love Potion SLP. I want to give uh, Fantum the chance to elaborate on his portfolio by himself. Please also quickly introduce yourself and also share with us what goal you want to achieve with your crypto portfolio. So, hey guys, do you hear me? We can hear you. Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, invitation first, uh, Alice. Uh, it's uh, the other way around. So basically Solana is the biggest position with 35%, Smooth Love Potion the second uh, biggest with 15%, Chainlink uh, 14, uh, Polkadot 13%, VTHO which is part of the VeChain Foundation, uh, 6%, Matic 6%, Kronos 6% and AVEX 5%. And uh, that's an old screenshot from my uh, YouTube video where I introduced my uh, crypto portfolio. And this is just, just the altcoin. So I'm leaving Bitcoin to the side because basically Bitcoin, as you know, is basic and that's it's, it's safe stuff for me. It's not nothing I want to talk about because uh, it's uh, no secret that Bitcoin is going to go up in future. So um, that's purely the speculative part with altcoins. And from my point of view, I'm not a fundamental uh, analyst. I'm purely technical analyst. So I use Elliott Waves, um, which is part of my job. Yeah, I'm a technical analyst um, at a uh, known firm here in Germany. And what we do is uh, we uh, try to understand in which cycle some coins are. So basically, we use Elliott Waves as a direction throughout the market um, in sense of, in terms of, in which part of the cycle are we right now? And uh, we are getting more and more signals in that uh, we bottomed out mostly, most of the part. It depends on which coin we're talking about, but most of these coins where I think that we may have seen the bottom and Solana is a good, good uh, example for that. Uh, Solana is indeed my biggest position because we saw this huge uh, upside potential in 2023 last year and uh, I went into Zolana when it was around ten dollars or something so basically now it's because of the pump of the last year that Zolana is the biggest position in my portfolio and uh, I also have to admit that I don't know most of the coins I don't know at all what they're doing so I invest my money and same applies for stock market I have a stock portfolio and uh, a crypto portfolio and I don't invest in project where I think they have a good upside potential because the project is good or the vision behind this pro this project is good. I invest my money where I think the chart looks good. And so basically that's how I build up my portfolio. And till now it's uh, working pretty good, I have to say. And uh, so, yeah, that's uh, my two cents to this portfolio. And uh, have, I also have this. Do you have a target for the for the portfolio allocation that you uh, did you uh, currently have? Yeah, sure. It's it's not like uh, I want to make 10x or 20x. That's that's not the way how I'm investing. So I have overall targets for uh, the next bull cycle where we are in right now. So uh, for the next three to five, maybe 10 years, that's something we cannot um, we cannot calculate. We're ex extremely good in calculating bottoms and tops of the market, but we cannot really say is the price going to that number in 2025 or maybe 2030. 
but uh, we are very certain that most of the targets may hit in, in future. When exactly it will be, I don't know. But for example, uh, speaking to Solana, I have a price target of around uh, a minimum price target of around six hundred six dollars. In the expansion, it can also go to eight hundred and ten dollars. So uh, that is most of the parts um, my trading plan. I'm sticking to my overall cycle targets in uh, the next years, and um, it depends. Uh, to the structure of the coins that they are building up during this bullish cycle. And when I see a structure that looks more corrective, like for example, in XRP or Ripple, uh, I'm out of the market. So um, that's also a thing that uh, that's a, a phenomenon, I would say that uh, the XRP narrative is pretty huge. Everybody is talking about XRP and Ripple, and this is the next uh, big thing in the crypto space, but it's not moving, right? It's, it's, it's just there in the range from uh, one to two years ago and what's the reason and i think the reason is pretty obvious in the chart itself because the chart it's it, it is unhealthy and in solana we had this huge impulsive movement which 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 speaks for a healthy bull market case and uh, so i'm very yeah very confident that it will hit its uh, price targets in, in the near future that's why basically it is uh, one of the biggest positions in my portfolio yeah all right thank you for sharing uh, i think it's uh, a contrast to what we discussed before, like traditional investing and just relying on basically the technicals, what uh, Tom mentioned in the beginning. Is there an opinion you guys want to share on, on the yeah, perspective on investing or the allocation itself? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just like to say uh, XRP comments, very interesting. Uh, I think we bottom run, you know, AVAX potentially and Solana. I think that's really interesting as well. Um, but look, here, here's the fact uh, with this market now, uh, and we know this big narrative uh, that he's referring to there is the XRP IPO or the Ripple IPO, and it comes much later, most likely, and the XRP uh, ETF application, which I'm hearing should be in around April, uh, coming from BlackRock. So those are big narratives, and you look at the chart and you say, okay, well, the chart's unhealthy. Well, you do have to understand that there are certainly uh, – look, he said he doesn't even know what the coins do, which is totally fine. Uh, that's certainly a, a, a way to do this is to go strictly on technical analysis, and it sounds like he's done amazing at that, so great job. Um, if you are investing in coins strictly on technical analysis, though, you have to know that that's your strategy, and you can't be wavered uh, by any news or any event. It's purely chart investing only. And when you look at the XRP chart, certainly it looks horrible over the entire lifetime of it because of the 2017 pump uh, to 2018, uh, followed by a bear market that got absolutely crushed. And then right when it started to get off the ground, it got kicked in the teeth with the SEC lawsuit. Uh, so because it didn't make a new all-time high in the last bull market, and because it hasn't touched the all-time high from the last bull market either still, of course, uh, that means that it is definitely on the chart still on a downtrend. Uh, however, when it does break up out of that downtrend, uh, it's going to move parabolically. So I would say uh, I, I would not be looking at XRP uh, in terms of the chart, uh, unless that's all you do is look at charts, uh, because we know that a lot of crypto is narrative-based. So look how far the, theory, the ETF narrative alone pushed us when the actual ETF made us go down, <laughs> right? And we've seen, we saw this in the last market too, where uh, when, the, when the futures ETF got approved, one day it went up, and then that was the top, and then we crashed. So um, overall, uh, that's just comments I, was, I would like to make. Very interesting perspective. It's important for everybody to understand, where are you? Are you a fundamental trader, or are you a technical trader? Uh, or are you a hybrid? It's important to understand where you are, because if you if you base some of your investments on potential narratives, then you would completely ignore the chart, or vice versa. But probably the best strategy is using a combination of both. Uh, thank yeah, you, ben. Thank I, was, I was just going to say, I definitely use as much information as you can possibly get. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're when you trade, you're trading against the best, you're trading against the elite, you're trading against, you know, rooms and rooms of people who stare at screens all day and have more liquidity than you. So, you know, when you're trading, understand that, you know, it's a competition and that you like the I like I want people to think about it like a game. And I want you, when you understand how good your competition is and that it's like literally designed for you to try to lose, once you realize that they are trying to mislead you, uh, you know, that is, 
step one and step two is to try to do a, you know in any game any form of competition you want to outthink your opponent right so if it's charts if it's news if it's um you know alpha groups or social media i mean you don't have to just do one or the other i i, I mean personally i'm a chart guy myself but that doesn't mean the news doesn't matter to me uh, you know, it doesn't mean uh, someone I really, a lot of people I respect, I respect their opinions. And when someone says an opinion that differs my opinion, I certainly, I don't scoff at it. I, I look into it because, you know, you have to play devil's advocate with your own ideas. The second you think you know everything, the second you, you're, you're convinced you're right, that's normally when you get proven wrong. So, you know, just get as much information as you possibly can. That, that's my bit. Uh, Tom, I would also love to hear your opinion on this because I know you are also uh, partly a technical guy. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely a technical guy. And a lot of my investing is based on just charts and not narratives. Got a lot of uh, perspectives here. It's nice. But um, so I think something that's important is that when you are entering crypto, you can kind of have a dual mandate. You can have investments and you can have trades. And they can be separate and you can trade things that you don't really believe in that you don't you know you don't think is going to be the next big thing you know trade's just a trade and that doesn't have to really be in conflict with what you're investing in and on the idea of investing i always say the best way to do it is slowly over time just like a 401k i touched on it earlier as as much as we all just want to throw our money at something when we get excited i have watched thousands of people personally fail doing that and on the other side i have seen i would say less maybe hundreds of people succeed approaching it slower and more cautiously than it maybe feels good in the moment right um there is no one way to do it this is the way i do it this is the way i've seen success uh, many approaches can work but you know it's okay to take things slower it's okay you're not going to miss everything if you uh, don't put all your money in this thing right now. It almost always ends up being the wrong choice. Awesome. Thank you for the addition. So uh, let's move on to another portfolio with a 15x target that I uh, want you guys to discuss. And this might be the, the final portfolio we are discussing. So uh, let me quickly jump to it. So. I'm going to read out the education. As mentioned before, the goal is a 15x. We're going to start with 25% in HBR, 20% uh, in Chainlink, 15% in Algorand, 15% in Constellation Deck, 15% in Casper, 5% in TEL Coin, and 5% in Mira or Miria. Sorry. I think um, those coins are familiar to you guys. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I can take a stab here. Um, look, HBAR, Chainlink, Algorand. Uh, you know what's interesting? Uh, HBAR and Algorand, I kind of put them kind of in the same category. I think they're both going to do really well in this bull market. Uh, I've always seen those two as kind of connected. There's a lot of similarities between their approaches and uh, the type of person that likes those coins and the lack of marketing. Uh, they're rebranding here, uh, Algorand is, and HBAR obviously has some some dApps and some things that are, are, are doing well to get it out there. I think those are good picks. I, I don't know if one of those being 25% of your portfolio is necessarily the best. Uh, I would pu I would put all three of those, HBAR, Chainlink, Algorand, around 15%. Uh, Constellation DAG is an interesting project. It's got some, uh, some contracts with the United States military and uh, some other cool stuff. Uh, but I, I, once again, uh, you know, I think it's a decent pick. I, I would probably say more 10% or lower uh, allocation. I think Telcoin is the one that's really interesting here. Telcoin has had a, quite a history, a lot of volatility. Um, he must know something we don't on that one. And Miria, I can't remember what Miria is. I'm actually not familiar with that one. Caspa, I think Caspa's good. The, the, the thing with Caspa that people need to be aware of is that it's going to go one of two routes here. Okay, it's either going to go, the, uh, this happens to all coins that are massive pumpers at the beginning of a bull run. It's going to either do one of two things. It's either going to continue and it's going to become uh, like Elron or, uh, you know, XRP in 2017 or Neo in 2017. Uh, projects that just keep pumping no matter what. Solana, obviously, uh, Axie Infinity. Projects that just pump, 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 pumped all, all through the bull market. 
uh, Axie Infinity, not as much as, as Solana, but you guys get the point. So, um, but a lot of projects that pump near the beginning, kind of if you look at the way the chain link pumped at the, the bear market of 2019 leading into the bull market of 2020, uh, it, it got a little too excited because the people get the, in CASPA, uh, by the, it's already done so many Xs that by the time a lot of people are just starting to get good gains, uh, they're starting to get disappointed with their gains because they already had so much. Now they're starting to look over at other projects like, uh, should I roll this into something else now that I made all this money? Because it's going to most likely have some, well, it will have some massive retracements. But the question is, from this point forward, will Caspa outperform the rest of the market? It has so far. Uh, and so that really would determine how much of a bet you want to put on that. Um, I think 15% is fine. I, I think you're, there's, it, it's a, a, a little eccentric of a portfolio. It's missing a lot of major coins and it's got some uh, minor coins that are going to be in a lot less portfolios. So interesting portfolio overall. Uh, look, this is not my kind of portfolio. Uh, I would probably give this one a 50. Uh, I'd say it's got some good coins, but uh, I, it's kind of the allocations that I have a lot of problems with. I, I don't... I don't hate it that much. I think it has. What was the goal for it again? Really, if you don't mind, really fast. Was there one? I think it was twenty uh, x. Twenty x. So basically, anytime anyone says anything like twenty x, I always will, um, you know, kind of separate. Like, well, right. So, like, if it if it's sixteen x's, are you going to take profits? You know, you know. I, I feel like you have to ask yourself that question and have like a plan on the way up, just like you should have a plan on the way down. Um, and you know, I, I really feel like writing that kind of stuff down with price targets, price levels, you know, based off Fibonacci or whatever, however you want to do it. Um, anytime you have a goal that high, there needs to be another strategy other than, you know, 20 X. Um, but you know, when it comes to the, to the coins, I don't, I, I feel like he's, he's trying to like adopt to uh, like a, a new meta. I feel like there are a lot of, um, yeah, I, I like a, the bulk, like the H bar chain link Algorand. Like I'm all for that, and some of the other stuff. I understand why people are holding it, but I don't personally hold some of those myself. And then with the Caspa narrative, I, I, I mean, if if anyone got into Caspa at a penny or two pennies and did not sell uh, when it was where it was, like you know, fourteen, fifteen cents, I, I don't know what else to say because I don't know like what else you could ask for. Uh, especially when, like, considering the timing of when Caspa did what it did. So I'm not saying don't hold Caspa, but I'm saying, uh, you know, I, I bought and sold Caspa already and I'm willing to buy it once it maybe if it trickles a little further down. So just holding that one, just hoping for more, 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 um, you know, don't get greedy with that one, considering it already, you know, just outperformed mostly everything for a little while there. So that's always one of those ones I'm going to be a little careful with, but other than that, I don't mind the portfolio at all. I, I think the goal is far too ambitious, though. Um, the bag itself, I don't mind. The goal is n no. Um, so definitely try to have a you know have work a different strategy um, or just even if you want to get a twenty x, that's fine. I mean, I want one too, right? But you still need to have a, a, a plan for like when it gets numbers that are a little bit more pragmatic. But everybody, thank I have to peace out. My own live stream is starting right here over on YouTube, so I have to go. But thank you guys so much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Uh, ben, Tom, I'll talk to you guys later. And guys from Femex, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk soon. Have a good one. Thank you for being here, AJ. Thank you. Have a good stream, brother. Um, I'll talk about this for a second. This is uh, only the second portfolio we've seen that has a coin that I like in it, and that is Caspa. Uh, I'm boring, I guess. I like proof of work, decentralized blockchains. Uh, I don't know what Caspa is going to do here this year. It had a great run. Does it have more in it? I mean, that's really up to whatever the rest of the market does. Um, I would love to see a little bit of Bitcoin in there, my friend. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's not going to hold you back. It's gonna it's gonna bring you a little bit of comfort, uh, but I wish uh, I wish everybody luck with their portfolios here. Um, this has actually been a great space. I love I love the Ben and AJ kind of the contrasting views on portfolios. I think that's what gives people value. You know, if you just hear one thing, I don't think that really helps people uh, decide what's best for them. I'm gonna have to run too because I have to get ready to stream on YouTube. Hopefully. Some of you guys join me there later, um, but this has been a great space. Thanks for inviting me, Federico. Thank you, Tom. Always great to to have you. Uh, today it was a bit out of your comfort zone with all the 
fundamental talk, but I think you provided some some very good insight on on how you balance your own portfolio. Yeah, thank you for your time, Tom. All right, well, uh, guys, I think this was a good space. Uh, I kind of have a YouTube show, too. Uh, I have to go do. Uh, so everybody, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We grade these uh, portfolios, and I you know, hope nobody got offended if I didn't like yours. <laughs> uh, the, the important thing to remember in this space is, is that's the beautiful thing about cryptocurrency is we all get to do what we want to do. Uh, you can be like Tom and like Bitcoin. You can be like me, and you love Bitcoin for the philosophy, but as an investment, eh, I don't really care about it that much. I've already been through that rodeo. So... Uh, everybody's got their own opinions, and what you'll find is your thoughts and opinions will change a lot of the time while you're in this space over time. Uh, I certainly have a lot more, a lot of different viewpoints on things than I had when I first got in. Um, but overall, wish everybody the best of luck in your uh, crypto trading journeys. Uh, we need to get a crypto uh, trading contest going on FEMEX here pretty soon, I think. Uh, we can Absolutely. see how everybody's doing. Yeah, so appreciate you guys having me on. I love FEMEX. They're an uh, exclusive sponsor of my channel uh, for exchanges. Uh, it's the only exchange we work with, uh, and glad to do it. So appreciate you guys, and uh, you guys... Uh, Check me out uh, on Femex here pretty soon on their uh, the, the social fi uh, platform they have. I, the, the name escaped me for a second, but I will see you guys over there and appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Uh, guys from the audience, please make also sure to uh, follow Ben, AJ, as well as Tom uh, as an appreciation for their time, also for the, for the component that they shared with us. And also, guys, you can follow the Twitter account from Femex. I think you're already doing this. Because we have weekly spaces, I think a crypto portfolio review is very good and we are going to do another one very soon. So feel free to uh, post any suggestions to improve our Twitter space and also make sure to check out our Femex official site. We are going to launch uh, the Femex Pulse feature very soon, a social feature that Ben just mentioned, which is going to be very exciting and there will be a giveaway as well. All right. so. Thank you for your time and see you in the next Twitter space. Goodbye, guys.